What's up, everyone? How you all doing? I hope you're all having a wonderful morning. I see some of my friends here, some of my constant commenters. Uh, who we got? Jim's here. Gary, I see your names all the time. Seneca Bluegrass is our editor for these videos. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, Russell, hey, I'm glad you figured it out, man. Look, we're right here. We're finally, we're live together. It's happening. Marcel's my hero. You're too nice, man. You don't have to say stuff like that. Um... But, you know, happy to be a hero. Obviously, it feeds into my ego, which is constantly growing larger and larger. One day, I hope to turn it into an island and retire on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a good morning, guys. I didn't have any lessons. Uh, I didn't have any lessons this morning, so I slept in a little bit. Um, I did the, the morning workout, and I'm here. I haven't even played a guitar yet. So, it's going to be a good one. Cody, you're sitting around with the guitar. Nice to hear it, man. 
that is the move. Speaking of sitting around with a guitar and me not having played one, let's play something. This is your first live transcription. We're happy to have you here, man. Generally, when we do these, we hang out a little bit beforehand. Sometimes just for a couple minutes, sometimes for longer, though. Depends if anyone's got any questions, any burning desires to get off their chest. Pickers excited to learn. I like to hear that, man. What year is my D35? Well spotted, man. It is a D35. Um, <laughs> you know what? I've gotten this wrong in a bunch of comments. And uh, and it's because I don't think the owners exactly knew what year it was. So I've said that it's from 1969. I've said that it's from 1968. I finally look it up and it is from 1967. So uh, it's like every year that this thing is in my position, it gets a little bit older. Uh, but yeah, it's a great instrument. I love it so much. The original owner is a guy named Grandpa Arthur. Grandpa Arthur... Um, Grandpa Arthur, I believe, used it when he um, uh, opened for George Jones, I want to say, if I remember correctly. Um, so the guitar has done some things, which is exciting. Uh oh, Russell says he's stuck on stream starting soon. Someone tell Russell to refresh the stream. Um, hell, I'll tell Russell. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that'll get them. You know, we want everyone to have a good time. What do we got here? Um, there are tons of banjo songs that incorporate harmonics like Foggy Mountain Chimes, etc. What do you think about using harmonics on guitar? Yeah, that's a good question, Mike. Harmonics are sweet. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to really effectively use them outside of like a contest arrangement because uh, they're just not very loud. So in like the middle of a rip and bluegrass break, do you hear a bunch of harmonics? Not usually. It tends to be kind of a, a special situation that happens. Uh, you will hear some of that stuff when people are playing solo, when people are playing the contest stuff. You will get out those harmonics. I wrote an arrangement of Red Haired Boy that has that in it, but I don't think I can play it cold. That's the, that's the lick. And it's cool, but you could really only get it in a solo context because how loud am I really going to get those harmonics to sound? Not very loud. Um, Douglas, hey man, glad to see you all. Yeah, we're all hanging out. I'm kind of wondering about Mark O'Connor's stuff. Maybe one of his Beaumont rag breaks would be a good workout. Yeah, man, I'm not... I hate to say it, but I'm not a huge Mark O'Connor fan. Um, I I think he's done a lot of cool guitar work. I obviously can't say that. I enjoy a lot of his guitar stuff. Um, personally, he does. He's done some some weird stuff. So maybe I'm uh, less of a fan of him as a person. It's a it's an interesting situation. He's um you know he's obviously one of those top level players, but. He's got some drama surrounding his name, specifically with his uh, Mark O'Connor method for violin and then the more established Suzuki method. He sort of created some infighting within the community, and it's it's a bummer. Mark O'Connor is a huge Mark O'Connor fan. See, Peter gets it. I'm trying to be real polite about this whole Mark O'Connor situation, and, and Peter gets the joke, yeah. He's a great player, don't get me wrong. I 
I just probably won't cover any of his material. John Stickley does a lot with harmonics. Yeah, see, someone like Stickley is in a great position to do that, where he's playing with uh, a drummer and a fiddle player, and it's him on guitar, so the band is super stripped. Um, you know, he's got sort of a lot of space to fill, and ultimately not a whole lot backing. He's not fighting a banjo, he's not fighting a fiddle. You know, if he wants to do some cool harmonic stuff, he gets to. Um, that's evident in a lot of the things that he plays, actually. It's just the kind of arrangement that he deals with. He gets to do some really cool stuff um, that maybe the rest of us won't get to do. When I did that, uh, that interview with Mark O'Connor, with Mark O'Connor, when I did that interview with John Stickley, he taught me a really cool lick. Uh, I'm not sure if I can recreate it now. Uh, yeah, it was something like that. Uh, Cool uh, open string up the next stuff that uh, uh, Stickley does. Really like that stuff. Um, I really like your discretion. <laughs> uh, all right, what's Cody saying here? I really appreciate your channel for all the work you do. I realize you uh, gear towards more experienced players, but do you have anything on the more advanced strumming rhythm patterns? Not in content right now, um, but a lot of times what people miss about strumming patterns uh, about rhythm playing in general, I guess I should say, is that rhythm playing is really reactive. You're you're taking the uh, you're taking the whole situation into account and you're trying to respond to it. So, like, imagine I'm playing with a band and I'm listening to uh, the whole rhythm section, and I hear that the bass player maybe needs some help. Maybe I'm going to do some more bass work, right? I'm going to think. take on more of that job uh, rather than thinking too much about the chuck, right? Or maybe opposite situation. The bass player is doing a great job, but the mandolin player maybe needs some backup. I might just play. Really not even hitting specific bass notes. Uh, generally, it tends to be somewhere in between, but you can see what I'm getting at, right? To be more of an advanced rhythm player, you're reading the situation and what the group needs and you're responding to it. And that can be that can be difficult at times to really know what your job should be. Um, one, one advanced mover that maybe people don't do enough or give enough credit is the, uh, the rhythm push, which I love. I bring it up every single time someone asks this question because people don't do it enough. But uh, it's basically just a, a hard beat one. Um, I already did one. <laughs> well, a long, long time ago, when I left my home to roam down in the hills of Tennessee, I was the sweetest little girl that was ever in this world. That little girl of mine in Tennessee. That little girl of mine in Tennessee. You hear that? That little girl of mine in Tennessee. That's the rhythm push. And it's such a powerful move, and not enough people do that at all. Um, I'm getting buried. I got to keep moving. Kevin says, I normally watch your content every day, but I never take the time to actually start understanding theory on a better level. From which videos should I start in order to be familiar with the fretboard? Hmm. It's an interesting question to be familiar with the fretboard. There's a video that I have called, um, uh, transforming your pentatonic scales where I teach all of the pentatonic scales up and down the neck, there's five positions. And then I teach you ways to do different things with those five positions, turn them into major scales, look at them in a minor way with blue notes or major way with blue notes. I don't remember all the details of the video, but I do a lot of discussion about how to view the fretboard. So if you wanna be familiar with the fretboard, I would start there. What year is your Martin again? Sounds nice, 1967. It's from 1967. Oh yeah, someone already got that, thanks Kevin. Um, are you here, banjo player taking the lead and you want to save the audience? Yeah, exactly. Uh, when are you going to get Hatfield on for a lesson? Oh, that's a good question, my man, Scooter. Uh, we actually filmed a sit down with all the teachers where we just talked some guitar. It's not very structured. I don't know how well, um, how well it's going to edit up. 
but I am going to cut that up and I'm going to try to post that. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a group hangout and it'll sort of be your introduction to those other people if you haven't really met them yet. But Hatfield is a monster and he's been teaching lessons for Lessons with Marcel for two months now, maybe three months. Um, he's been doing a great job. I love that guy. Um, hi, everybody. Hey, hi back to you. Hey, Marcel, could you do one of the Tony Rice solos from Sam Bino on Tone Poems? Oh, on Tone Poems. That was, man, that, that took me on a mental journey. Uh, yeah, we could do that, man. I want to do more of the Tone Poem stuff. We'll, I think we'll get to that. Um, we're actually going to try to do a deeper Tony Rice cut today, um, should time allow and everything else. How do you do the six second ending run from Brown's Fairy Blues? You think I know that off the top of my head? I don't know that off the top of my head. We'd have to listen to it, my dude. But I mean, I will say just for you that how do you do the six second ending run from Brown's Fairy Blues can probably be answered by opening the YouTube video and hitting the playback speed and slowing it down, watching really carefully what his fingers do. Um, you can at least get close, um, but we might come back to that question. I'm still ready to learn stuff that I'll try for a few minutes and then forget about it. Um, he got some serious touch, Hatfield that is. Yeah, he does. Oh man, some of those arrangements are great. That video where he does the um, uh, Turkey in the Straw and he does St. Anne's Real. He's got incredible arrangements of both of those. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, I did an interview with Andy Hatfield. You might know him as Mando Hat on YouTube. Um, he's an awesome guy and he teaches for the channel now. Um, or he teaches for LWM now, I should say. Um, so check him out. All right, guys. Let's listen to this first Tony Rice break. You can keep the questions coming. We can keep hanging out. But we're going we're gonna to try to do this at the same time. Yeah, we really need to do a Norman Blake lesson. There's a couple of people that, that we haven't hit uh, yet on the channel that we just, we have to do. It's so long overdue. And there hasn't been a real dedicated, like uh, Clarence White lesson or it's super dedicated Doc Watson lesson or it's super dedicated Norman Blake lesson. Um, I spent a lot of time on like Tony Rice and modern players. And um, yeah, that's just a, a fault of my own. So there's definitely some stuff that we want to dig into that we're we're coming up with ways to do that. Um, one of the ways that, that uh, we were hoping to do that was with um, the comparing the breaks uh, video. We did that with Long Journey Home, where we listed three different breaks from different eras. So we listened to, in that video, I believe we listened to George Shuffler's break, we listened to Larry Sparks' break, and we listened to Billy Strings' break all in the same song. And that was a way to sort of get in some of those older players. Um, so that's the idea. I learned Tony's lick from Cheyenne and my Hispanic family is so confused because it sounds almost like Hispanic music, but at the same time, it sounds so new to them. Um, Kevin, Kevin, you should check out the band Shea Appalachia. I think they spell it like, God, how do they spell it? Let me look it up real quick. Um, that is a, a, a great band and they're all from, I think from different places in Latin America. And they, um, they do a lot of, um, uh, uh, they do a lot of, you know, Spanish songs, uh, from, from different places. The one that, uh, I'm thinking of is, uh, Dialingo Lingo, I believe the tune is. Is that right? Am I wrong? Um, that's a, that's a good tune though. Um, the Lingo Lingo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a great tune that they do. They do another one called um, Cambalache that I love. Um, but yeah, that band is a great mix of those two things. You're not wrong, man. The genres are pretty similar. Chad Atkins is real good. Jack Lawrence, please. Yeah, man. We're going to hit those things, I swear. Hey, Marcel, thanks so much for the old Ebenezer Scrooge chat. That arpeggio bit is so hard to get, but I'll get there one day. Yeah, man, the arpeggio bit is impossible. I sat there for hours trying to play that. I wish I could tell you how long, but it was probably like you know, two hours just sitting there trying to get that arpeggio right. <laughs> Mark's off limits here to the O'Connor rule. That's right. <laughs> he won Winfield too many times, so lessons with Marcel can't talk about Mark O'Connor. <laughs> you guys. All right. Here we go. Here we go, folks. 
here's our uh, first break. We got to listen to the intro because this is fun. This is kind of a deep cut. I bet a lot of you haven't heard this. This is Tony Rye's Big River. Here we go. Well, I taught the weeping willow how to cry, cry, cry. And I taught the clouds how to cover up the clear blue sky. But the tears I cried for that woman never flood too big a river. And I'm gonna wait right here until I die. That's cool. All right, folks, that's the goal. That's the break we're going to try to do. Whoops, hit the wrong thing. Um, yeah, Monster Tune. Mike's hitting us with the information. Thanks, man. Mike Mike knows what's going on. Originally by Johnny Cash, he thinks. It's a it's a killer tune. This is actually a request I got from um, someone in my email. Oh, man, I don't remember their name. Let's look it up real quick because I'll feel so bad if I miss another name on a suggestion. Um because <laughs> you guys deserve the shout out. Oh no, can I find it? I might not be able to find it. You know who you are. I appreciate you. Thank you for your suggestion. I'm doing it. Um, I'm so sorry that I don't have your name handy. And I guess we move on with our lives. Okay. Um, once again, sorry if you suggested this and I've forgotten who you are. That's totally my bad. Thank you for suggesting it. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, the pull offs, the arpeggios, totally. Super difficult. Second break gets real trippy. Oh, Mike, we got us to the second break? Okay, well, let's do it. Um, Okay, we're not doing the trippy break. <laughs> we're doing the normal break. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be writing out syncopations for days. All right, gang. <laughs> okay, uh, let's find this first break again. All right. It sounds like a hammer on to a high note. And then one of these fast pull-offs. I'm not sure exactly what that note is on the top. I guess it could have been the brew note. It didn't sound like that to me. Um, this Tony Rice lick. Pretty sure I heard this. Um, I know that's a lot to write down in one go. Let's see if I can talk my way through this. Um, so I hear the hammer-on going up to to kind of a landing note up here. Tony Rice does that a lot in the beginning of these breaks. Um, sometimes he'll do something like this, which is the beginning of Blue Ridge Cabin Home, right? Where he's got a different leading up phrase, but he still grabs a high note on the E string. Um, so this is kind of a, this kind of shape or this kind of look is a really common thing for him to do. Um, this lick too is really common. I go into a bunch of detail in, um, uh, what's the video called? It's called How to Play Hot Bluegrass Licks like Tony Rice, something like that. I go into a lot of detail about how these licks are created. And basically it's, you know, uh, a pretty clear uh, process, right? Where we have this like pull-off move, we have this slide move, we have this thing after it. Um, they always kind of happen in the same order. They're built out of the same chunks. So if you can know that it's that kind of lick, normally it's not that hard to try to figure out, you know, what's going on afterwards. So... That's why I think I know what happened there. Um, I'm going to preemptively say that that was a pull-off name. Right here until I die. All right, so I heard um, the same thing twice right after this. 
or da da do da da da, right? It's the same thing twice. So I think I can grab that without testing my instrument either. Not sure what that note right there was, so I'm making a bold choice. Um, but it sounds like a little piece of a deconstructed G run. I'll see how far I can get without without testing this right now. Another slide. Sounds like it's sliding up into the third. This bluesy move, I want to say like a hammer on. Man, tough. I, I don't I don't know what I'm writing. Solid guessing. I know what this phrase is though. Do do da do da do da do. He does this in um he does this whole lick in the beginning or in the middle of uh, old train. Um so we've heard that lick before. <laughs> drone all right that's enough that's a uh, way more than I probably should have written look here we are cable okay, three we're in B flat boys hey whoa Ben Henry Thanks for the money, man. Thanks for the five bucks. You're the most effective teacher I've had virtual or otherwise one hell of a player too. Thank you so much, Ben. Let me hit you with, uh, with a new classic move, the, uh, the North Carolina uh, Amen, the North Carolina Namaste, just a quiet hell yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, okay, I still got to play this thing. Still got to play it. <laughs> So I don't think this measure is totally right. I feel like I lied to you guys a little bit in that measure because I didn't know what was happening. So let's take this and let's finally go to the playback speed here. We're gonna hit the settings wheel, go to playback speed. We're gonna pick, oh, uh, uh, I guess half speed makes sense. We'll come back to transcribe over here and let's figure out what actually happens in all this. Okay, so it sounds like he actually hits like the G string again. Yeah, okay. So we got answers for what actually happens right here. Maybe that was it. Uh, Mike, there's a two chord in there. You are exactly right, Mike. This is the two chord right here. So we're using G shapes. This is basically all G, I think. I want to say it's all G. Uh, and then this would be like A7 going to D7 or just A major going to D major. Um, sounds like a bunch of offbeat stuff. Uh, so. uh, 
Uh, yeah, right. So like maybe two quarter notes right here. If this D chord keeps going, I might have a little bit of a crooked form on the page, which is fine. Yeah, it seems like a, an abrupt switch to more of a major sound. Right, and we're back to the one chord. Cool. Da, do, da, do, da. This is a time waster if I ever saw one. Uh, <laughs> Tony does not know what he's going to play next. Sorry, I made this more uh, bluesy, but it's more bluesy. Kind of hard to hear the inside of that line. Yeah, I, I like that. I just want the chromaticism to line up exactly where it feels like it does in the song, which is kind of an awkward spot. Right, that makes sense. And then we get this uh, this move again to pull off. We talked about this already. Um, how to play hot licks like Tony Rice is the video you want. You can find stuff like that. Let's see what's going on here. Chat, where'd you go? Chat, are you hypnotized by my transcription? We were all hanging out. We we're all talking together, and then I start transcribing, and you go, you go quiet on me. You're not intruding. I come here to hang out with you. And where are you? <laughs> All right. So it sounds like this doesn't actually happen. You go straight into that slide, I think, is what's actually going. Uh, so I'll do it. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'll do it like that. I'm glad you're uh, playing everything I transcribed. Uh, you know, let me know if you find any mistakes. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I wish I was.
<laughs> We've all got our guitars in our hands now. <laughs> uh, when I am uh, when I am playing, am I anchoring on the pins? Um, yeah, I, I touch on the pins for sure. Um, I tend to think of anchoring mean that you're you're putting weight on something. You're like flexing to keep it there. Um, so that's that's my big beef with technique. I know different people have different tech, uh, different uh, different opinions, but uh, but I'll show you what mine are. So if you if you have an open hand and you touch, but your hand is free moving, don't really care. If you touch on your pins and your hand is free moving, I don't really care. Uh, Molly Tuttle does that too. She touches on her pins and her hand is free moving. When she strums, she lifts off the pins. Um, but uh, if you if you plant fingers and they're holding weight, you can actually feel like your tendons flexed. That's bad. You lock in here, you can actually feel yourself pushing into the top of the guitar. That's bad. So yeah, do I touch on the bridge pins? Hell yeah, I do. Um... <laughs> My disciples remain quiet as you transcribe. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that. Let us all together say a quiet, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you found out about my channel, man. Thanks for hanging out. It's just it's just a big bluegrass Tony Rice party over here. We're trying to learn all the licks. <laughs> uh, this is weird. I I don't I don't think this is like perfectly right because I'm writing Tony Rice playing that G note two times in a row, uh, right here across this bar line. Let's all just pretend it's correct and let's keep moving. <laughs> Silently, hell yeah. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just know when you've started something. Did I even write that enough times? I don't think I did. Yeah, I did. So I think that this is just tied over and he just starts in on the offbeat right here. I mean, you can argue with me. Also, if you're looking at all of these crazy accidentals, we will fix them. Um, I know it's a mess right now. The computer just automatically picks very strange accidentals and it bothers me all day while I look at it uh, until I get to go back to fix it. So, so don't judge me. They weren't my first choices for sure. Oh yeah, the C sharp thing, that's gonna be a mess. Look, it's overlapping in the, okay, whatever. We're not gonna look at it right now. Um, oh yeah, you can hear like a slide too. So um, here, let me show you real quick. Uh, so the, the chord thing that Tony Rice does, he does it in a couple different ways. Right now we're in B flat. Uh, so I'm cape of third, so I know that my true 12th fret, right, is going to be 3 fret above. And the reason why I do that calculation is because that means I can play this Tony Rice chord licks. So just speaking that one to you, the chords that I'm playing are like uh, an F chord, like an E minor chord, like a D minor chord, like a C chord, and then this hammer on. Barring third fret, hammering on to fourth fret on the G string. So uh, if I said those with fret numbers, that's all 10th fret, that's a nine and eight, that's seven and six, that's five, that's third fret with a hammer on to fourth fret. Something that Tony Rice does a lot. Um, it didn't sound exactly like that in this uh, in this passage though. It sounded like he was sliding up on the high E string. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's some high E string stuff going on. I think it's a D shape right there in the beginning. Um, yeah, I use that turnaround a lot. Oh, let's answer some questions because I see these things coming in. We will get to that chord thing. Um, am I using MuseScore? I'm not using MuseScore. I'm using Guitar Pro 7, um, which is my uh, notation software of choice. Um, really like what they do. Really like um, how things are uh, customizable visually. I think it's a really great product. Um, really, I, I have to use something that I enjoy and that I can write quickly with because uh, for each of my students, I write custom arrangements and custom tabs uh, for each of their lessons, and I email them afterwards. So, you know, in the course of a lesson, I'm writing, you know, up to two or three pages of music. Normally not that much, but it can be. So I need something that I can make look uh, nice quickly and that I can, you know, just bust out. Uh, what pick do I use? Yeah, right now I'm actually using the Blue Chip Tad 60. I am normally a Tad 50 boy. But today we're we're breaking new ground. We're trying the 60. I know my camera won't refocus on that, I don't think, but trust my words. Um, yeah, what else we got going on? I just read a Reddit thread about O'Connor. Everything makes sense now. Yeah, Kevin, I'm I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you have the uh, the cursed knowledge now. He's uh, he's got his rough spots as as a person, but uh, but he's a great player. He's a great player. Uh, we can't take that away from him. Um, but, you know, something to be aware of. Um, is that a brass screw back capo? <laughs> I've been looking for a brass one after watching your capo video. It is. It's the one from the capo video. That capo is called the ultimate capo. You want a D35? D35 is my favorite, man. I love the way they sound. Um, sometimes they're not the right thing for a bluegrass band. But they got this real full kind of boomy sound that just works great sometimes especially when you're playing by yourself it is an excellent sound let's see if we can at least try to get to the bottom of this chord thing though God, if it is, I've never seen someone do that. agree on the last three chords. Okay, let's bring that up. Let's slow this down to um, even slower. Let's go a quarter of the speed. This is going to be brutal to listen to, but I just want to find out the truth here. Even that slide is weird. Although now that we listen to it super slow, I realize that note is wrong. It's weird because he's like he's sliding up on on some kind of bass note, and then he's sliding up in some kind of chord shape, and it feels like a like a slightly chordal voicing.
So mystery slide. And then there's some kind of slide that's like uh, going from seven to eight. It's always weird when you have a capo on and you're like, uh, where am I capoed again? Um, and then, yeah, and he's hitting something else up here, some higher notes. So this is just ghosting things in. It's something like that. Um, I'm definitely stealing the mystery slide. Yeah, mystery slide is a cool move. I wish I knew exactly what was actually happening. Um, bass note, bass note mystery is another one too. I don't know. It feels like this slide is almost like these two notes, but it doesn't really make any sense. Let's put them in parentheses in the mystery category, and sometime I'll come back and figure out the mystery slide. But this is uh, becoming boring content. So as they say, let's move on. I'm definitely stealing the mystery slide, right? Uh, hey, what are your favorite strings? Love the channel, man. Thanks, Devin. Um, right now, I am just playing Diodario mediums. I think the EJ 17s is what they are. Um, I play a lot of uh, straight up strings too. Those are the two strings that I play. Um, let's see. Right here, straight up too. Free, free advertisement for straight up strings. They're a cool boutique brand. Um, I love what they do. They've sponsored a couple of videos, um, and, uh, they've, they've been nice to me at every turn. I actually met them because they did me a favor without even knowing who I was. I was at a convention center and, uh, a fair amount of my friends are, are sponsored by them. And I was like, Hey, can I leave my backpack here? Like I got to go film some stuff. And like, you know, I, I really don't want to carry it around with me. Like, I know I don't know you at all, but will you guard my backpack with all my stuff in it? And the lady was like, yeah, of course. No problem. You're friends with so-and-so? So they, they've always been very cool to me. <laughs> you should check out Straight Up Strings if you've never heard of them. All right. <laughs> all right, we're doing a normal luster flat G run to end. Cool. He goes back to his rhythm job. All right, guys. I know we got we got mystery boy here, but um, but other than that, I think we got a real success story on our hands here. Uh, we do have to figure out that at some point, but I'm not gonna stress over it right now. So let's write this down. Uh, Big River, as performed by Tony Rice. It already says tap by Marcel. Right here, we're gonna write in guitar break. And I'm going to put in the pick strokes while we hang out. 
Awesome. Thanks. No problem, man. Yeah, I have to help. Honestly, I say this every time someone asks that question, but you know, if you're really going for the bluegrass sound, a lot of it has to do with a fresh set of strings. So a lot of these bluegrass musicians out there, despite what they might say, um, really are going for pretty cheap strings because they're changing their strings every gig or every two gigs. So it just makes sense for them to play really fancy, bizarre strings because they're just going to change them again. Um, they're after the brightness more than anything of a new pack because they want to cut through all the other instruments. Um, so if you're looking for a string that's going to do that with any type of longevity, it just doesn't exist. The strings break in. And sometimes, depending on the musician, sometimes bluegrass musicians fight that breaking in a little bit. They're really after that fresh sound. All right, let's do a little hanging out, guys. Um, been using straight ups since you first mentioned them. Yeah, enhanced bass. Yeah, exactly. See, they they had this like medium pack and this heavy pack, and they really needed a pack in between. They did the enhanced bass, and I think that made a huge difference too. That is my preferred set now too. Pete says, "Well, I guess I got here a little late." Oh, no, you're fine, Pete. I just flew through that one. There's another one I actually want to do today, too. Um, have I ever tried Santa Cruz strings? They're expensive, but sound great. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have tried them. Uh, it was a while back. I, I, I couldn't tell you much about it. I don't remember. Um, but there's a couple packs like that. I remember one time I was talking to a guy about the, uh, you know, like the Elixir, like the Nano Webs. And I was like, yeah, I don't like them because there's like a, it's like a residue or a film and sometimes they peel. And he was like, when's the last time you played one of those? And I was like, I don't know, 15 years ago. <laughs> He's like, well, there's your problem, you know? So I'm sure a lot of these brands have gotten a lot better and I've just been playing the same stuff over and over again. Uh, played Black Diamond back in the day. I got a framed uh, set of Black Diamond strings uh, in the living room. Um, I actually played them when I was a kid too. This is a weird story, but... Um, my drum teacher when I was a kid used to own a music shop and he had a grocery bag that was full of old guitar strings that didn't sell when the shop closed. So when we were growing up, my brother was playing guitar and I was playing drums. He gave us this bag of guitar strings. So my brother would just, every time he broke a string, he would just string it up with something from that grocery bag. And, um, and when I started playing guitar, I would use the grocery bag too. And, you know, I'd string it up, whatever. And years later, I'm learning Church Street Blues and I hear you know, old black diamond brand. And I'm like, Oh yeah, those, those strings that we used to just haphazardly throw around. Yeah. Those are all black diamonds. Besides TR, who are some of your favorite players? Oh, you know, I'm a Trey Hensley boy. Trey Hensley is my boy. Uh, <laughs> I love his playing. I truly, truly do. I really like Pat Flynn's playing from uh, Newgrass revival too. Pat Flynn, great songwriter. Really interesting ideas that are totally different. Of course, you know, shout out to people like David Greer. Um, totally different kind of player. Uh, discovered Richard Bennett a few days ago. One hell of a player. Hell yeah. Uh, hello from snowy England. Hey, Dan. Glad you're doing well. All right, everyone. We will put this tab on the site sometime soon. I will put chords in it. Maybe I'll review the, uh, the mystery slide and try to get all of that correct. We'll, we'll see what happens with all of that. But I think it may be time to move on to break number two. I wish to do a Billy Strings break. I'm going to have one picked out that a lot of people have suggested on YouTube. In fact, too many people to shout out because so many different people have suggested it. But it is uh, Lost John. Lost John by Billy Strings. Is everyone in for that? Does anyone have any objection to us doing Lost John, Billy Strings? I'm sure that's why he gave us that uh, grocery bag full of strings. It's because, you know, it was like all the cheap stuff. He just had a bunch of black diamonds. He was like, yeah, I'll just give these kids a bunch of cheap strings. And, uh, yeah, we played the hell out of those. I wish, I, honestly, I wish I had more. Because the only ones that I have left are the, the ones that are in the frame. You know, I happen to have just just enough left to put in a picture frame when I realized that they, you know, were kind of cool. <laughs> Um, Colton Thomas says, can we do Wild Bill Jones, Billy Strings? 
Colton, I actually have a tab for that. I just haven't put it on the website yet. So if you email me, um, don't everyone email me at once. Um, Colton, if you email me there and you uh, remind me that you're from the live stream, you're looking for Wild Bill Jones by Billy Strings, I can get it to you. Um, can you put the big river transcription up again for a second? Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, which part are you trying to look at, man? You want to look at the end? Here, wait, 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 wait. Let me get rid of this cheap music. I can probably get the whole thing on the screen for you. Uh, Cody says, ah, Billy, the man that attracted me to bluegrass. No objections. Yeah, there we go. What? Was that a, was that a quiet hell yeah? I like that. Back in the day, I used to cook strings to refresh them. That's a bass player trick, man. Only bass players are allowed to cook strings. Uh, Trey's from my neck of the woods. Trey's a monster player, man. Love Trey. Um, yeah, I'm glad so many of you are Billy Strings fans. This will be fun, though. Um, a handful of people have asked me about this Lost John thing, and it's kind of different because it's... Uh, you know, because it's in like, uh, it's in E, you know, and normally we don't play in those keys. Random recording question. How do you record banjo? You don't. Just kidding, man. Um, you, <laughs> you can record banjo. Um, ultimately, you sort of mic what you want. So different people will give you different opinions depending on what they want. But um Remember that, uh, for instance, you know, if you if you make things closer to that picking hand, you're going to get more of that like plunking sound, the attack of the string. If you back that mic off, you're going to get more of a room sound. So you get to decide sort of where on the neck it is and what the distance is. And that's sort of the real basics of how you might mic something like that, how you might mic a guitar, too. Um, so, you know, without getting into any specifics, there's the idea uh, in terms of later on you know eqing and mixing this thing normally with a banjo it it helps to do a little bit of a limiting or compression because the uh the transients peak so fast when you record a banjo um sort of it's so up and down real quick very loud very soft so uh, normally that helps and then for the eq a lot of people try to eq all of the low end off of the banjo and that kind of turns it into a tinny mess so don't eq it too hard that's my advice for recording banjo um I've been trying to play Trish Street Blues for a few months now. Many tabs online and covers, but it's really difficult to play like Tony's VHS version. Oh, you're telling me, man. All right. Let's see. Maybe we can do a... Maybe we can do a cold Trish Street Blues. Definitely faking some parts. Um, I don't know it as well as I should, but one day we'll do a video on it when I can play it better. It's hard, man. It is a, an absurdly hard tune. I've probably been working on Church Street Blues for 10 years now. Um, so don't get beat up. If you want to figure out that VHS version exactly, it's probably up to you. Um, my tab is one of the closest out there for sure. Um, the other guy, Chris Brennan, has a pretty detailed tab as well. I would check those out. Um, I've been listening to nothing for, but, uh, but Clarence White for a whole week. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, I was saying earlier that we, we plan to do some videos on, on Clarence. We'll just make that happen. Just, I wanted to add a quick thank you. I've only just gotten into bluegrass guitar and you've turned me on to loads of great guitar players, Tony Rice included. So thanks, man. I love hearing that, that, you know, those, those comments are, are so sweet and they, they, they really beat me up when Tony Rice passed away. And so many people were like, hey, I never would have heard of Tony Rice if it wasn't for you. And, you know, I'm just looking at my phone like bawling. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. 
Uh, you can buy a black diamond today, a bit more expensive. Yeah, they're owned by like a different company and everything. It's not the same. Um, okay, so Billy Strings, Lost John. Yeah, time to roll on. Time to move on, do this thing. Uh, okay. Here we go, folks. We well, lost John walking along in the rain around the curb, coming past the train. John made a grab, but he couldn't get a hold. Left him sitting on the old railroad. Is long gone, long gone, long gone. Yeah, there's, there's a lot in here that we can do. Um, that's quite a bit of it, uh, sort of roughed out. <laughs> on the road again. You know, uh, I got a funny story about On the Road Again. So uh, I used to sing On the Road Again whenever... Um, whenever me and this uh this band that i played with and this uh this duo that i used to play in whenever we'd get into the car to drive to a gig or to do like a little weekend tour i would immediately go on the road again and then you wait you wait as long as you want just this long silence i can't wait to be on the road again and between every line you just let that thing breathe and i used to annoy the hell out of people singing on the road again <laughs> such a stupid gag <laughs> uh okay let's get a new let's get a new tab open uh first things first how long do you do this drone long Uh, so that's uh, B4 of the previous measure. And right away he comes in on this uh, drone. Right, and he's curious oh, how long to do it for. So it sounds like two measures, something like that. I do the same if people don't sing along, they're kicked out of the vehicle. That's a good policy, man.
Oh, I don't know. Let's slow it down. Settings wheel, playback speed, half speed. Uh, I see. Um, the celebrate riff, as in like celebrate good times, come on. Can't say I know what you're talking about. I'm sure you have a cool reference that you're pulling, Pete, but I don't know it. That is what you mean. Oh man, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't remember that. Right. Heard the same thing twice. Is that droning I hear? It is that same descending like, oh, that's good to hear. I, I, I have a new reference that I wouldn't have caught otherwise. Let's fix this key signature before anyone yells at us. Oh, we're in the key of E, huh? There we go. So look at the end of the video. We might have to go look at that. How does he stream that again? Uh, boom, bam, checka, checka. Oh, really like that. Um, these in parentheses because they're quieter. Where's my cat? <laughs> uh, my, my video is cutting out? Is my audio cutting out? What's cutting out? Um, give me more details. Let me know why the stream is bad. And I will fix it if I can. Uh, it sounds like a band right there. Come on, where's the band? Where's the band? There's the band. 
Cool. <clears throat> oh, you were <laughs> correcting your last guy. Yeah, I got it. Uh, cool. Thanks, everyone. False alarm. False alarm. Back to your stations. This is why we have drills. We have drills because, you know, when it's the real thing, you'll be prepared. When the video is cutting out, you know, we'll, we'll all know what to do. We'll hit battle stations. Everyone knows what to type in the comment section. This was just a drill. This was just a test run. I'm glad you're all out there. You're doing the good job. You know, you're doing everything right. Next time, when it's the real deal, I know you got my back. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, he kind of just does this, like, uh, you know, like a little kind of nothing strum. Just hitting all these strings kind of real loosely. Put them all in parentheses. Not important. Run thing. Quick strum. Parentheses, not important. Pull off right here. High E string. Okay, did we end up off on measures? Should we be more like this? I think we should. So we'll put five in the beginning because we have this, the pickup measure. Um, hate when my pickup measures have odd beats, so we'll put two beats in that measure. All right, break starts. Let's fill in this information because I'm already up here writing it down now. Uh, lost John, belly strings. Cool. <laughs> Look at that in the sheet music. That looks like mess. Let's, uh, let's turn off the sheet music because <laughs> we're gonna give someone a heart attack. All right. <laughs> A lot of strumming we're writing down today, man. Okay, so yeah, how's that work? So he's hitting the D or the E string twice. Then he's doing like a like a half step thing. Do do boo do. Do 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 do. Is that what it is? So he does it twice in a row. Last time he's taking his time. Da 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 da. But, um... Right. So he means to play, you know, kind of one of these. Boogie Boogie for sure, man. So we'll just grab this phrase, because that's what he's trying to play. He hits a bum note in there, but that's, you know, whatever. Right, and he hits one strum, because that's all he's got time for. We'll grab that strum from up there, copy and paste. I think he's going to do the whole thing again. Oh, 
Okay, so relatively the same thing. We gotta edit it a little bit. So he's doing slides right here. And then this line changed. Yeah, right, that makes sense. So it's like that now. And then uh, he had something getting him to an A, right? He plays an A note down here. Um, right here, I think he did something else. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, um, right, he's trying to lead us into that A chord. So he hits another one right there, but it's kind of quiet. And then this would be um, the minor to major third of the E chord leading straight into the four chord. So into this A note, that would be the four chord. And then he comes up and plays this bar, it's right at 12th fret, right? So he's got 11 and 12. Whoops, give me 11. So one, two, three, and and four. One, two, and and one rather. Um Uh, we'll do ties. We'll do ties right here. Is that everything? Oh, there we go. So, do ba 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 ba. Is it something else on B1? No? Not the right chords. Come on, computer, keep up. So he kind of slides out of this. Um, but then there's there's some dead and strums in here where he's kind of not hitting anything. Um, let's just write those in his axes. Cool. Um, is that part of a bigger A shape? Um you know, there's there's kind of something else different going on there, but I can show you. Um, so there would be like a like an A shape right. Uh, if I can type, there would be like an A shape right here. Uh, whoops, and this is just like going up to the twelfth fret and creating another A chord, right? And then there would be uh, another A shape uh, just below that that would look like. Um, this um, kind of a C shape, right? Both of these would be A chords. And in, in a weird way, he's kind of using a combination of those. So um, instead of using the third right here, instead he's playing the, uh, what would this be, the second? Or, uh, you know, rather the ninth. Instead of playing the fifth right here, he's actually playing the sixth. And so uh, this 12 and 11 go together to form this chord, which would be like an A6-9 chord, which is in jazz kind of used as a, uh, a one chord. It doesn't really have like a dominant function or anything else. Um, so yeah, A6-9. Nice.
Mark says, this is pretty awesome to see this today. I'm writing a story about Tony Rice for a major publication right now. Just got off the phone with Jason Burleson and hoping to chat with Shady Crow this week. And I hope all those conversations go well. Um, and I hope your article comes out nice, man. Um, I'm supposed to be having some some stuff cooking, too. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Typical in Gypsy Jazz instead of Major 7. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's a used for the one chord. It's a really sort of neutral embellishment. Um, uh, genres outside of Gypsy Jazz or Jazz um, would would use it as like an ending chord too, just to have like a sparkly sound. So you might hear, uh, you know, for instance, someone going... Um, right, that sound that same chord oh, yeah, I'm just scooting it down so it works for C um, so the same sound it just feels like a little you know shimmery at the end of a song some people do that but that's that's it um, yeah quite <laughs> Question for me regarding the story. Do I own an Accutron? No, I don't. Um, I I don't own an Accutron, let alone the, the the Space View one. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Um, but no, I don't have one. Uh, I know it's kind of a Tony Rice fan thing to get one of those, but let's say I don't have one yet. A lot of people ask me about um, ask me about my ring. Ask if I wear this, you know, this big fancy diamond ring because of Tony Rice. Um, but I don't. This this ring was actually my grandfather's. It's got like 45 diamonds in it. It's a ridiculous Elvis ring, and it's all real. And um, and yeah, when he passed away, they uh, they decided to give me the ring. So I have a sparkly Tony Rice ring, but it's got nothing to do with Tony. Uh, maybe one day I'll get that Accutron. <laughs> it would certainly be cool. I wouldn't be mad about getting an Accutron. It seems like he's hidden maybe like that. So I'm hearing this twice. Da da do da 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 and the blue note ba da da right here. Uh, flattening out his finger, kind of that, um, what do they call that? Um, it's a dance step that they call that, the flattened out finger. I don't remember. Glad you got the reference. That's the story. Going to enjoy listening to the transcribing. Yeah, man. Um, I dropped a, a help email address in the chat. If you want to talk or if you, I don't know. Um, if I can help in any way, let me know because I love Tony and his playing sort of put this whole YouTube channel as <laughs> at least partially a shrine to Tony Rice. So thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate that you're writing an article to keep him in everyone's minds. Hey, what's up, Joe? Where you been all day? You know, some people in the chat earlier were like, hey, where's Joe? And yeah, Joe should be here. And I was like, well, I guess he just doesn't care about music anymore. Um, but I'm glad that you're here now, man. <laughs> um, Joe, I'm I'm so glad that you're here. I will even share some of this applause emoji with you. Oh, you're a working man. I get it. I get it. If I was a working man, I'd understand. All right.
That's... Oh, sorry, this is supposed to be a B7 chord. I just put the wrong chord here. That was a bad copy and paste. Uh, which, which version of that lick was that? I'm not sure we've written down that specific variation. Not sure that's come up yet. So da 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 ba da eighth notes. Bend, copy and paste. Flowy. Oh, okay, so he strums an E chord, he strums an A chord. Right, we can we can make that happen. So uh, let's see right here. We're gonna strum that that E chord. We go to this A chord. Suppose we want these to be uh, like quarter notes. Still like this. I'm not sure this is the exact strum pattern, but this is you know good enough to get this. These details really aren't important uh, in this situation. We're just strumming. And there was a moment earlier where we did that little uh, that little G run move. Uh, maybe we can snag that. Where was it? Right here. So do da ba da, ba, and then you start singing. Right, that's the whole break, gang. I wonder if we can fit this all into one line. That's probably pushing it. That's probably pushing it. I'll make it look nice some other time. Oh, what's up? Did everyone leave? No, we still got like 50 people here. You're all still hanging out. Oh, right, right, right. You were saying that we should check out the uh, the ending run. Let's go listen to that real quick. Because um, I remember you saying that. Let's do it at normal speed too. Let's see if we can get it even closer. Not that one. He says it's a doc lick. Totally. For anyone curious, that, that chord that he does end on this, you know, when he's grooving down this whole thing. Right? Whatever he actually plays right there specifically. He's ending on the, uh, like, the Jimi Hendrix chord. Whatever, however that thing goes. There it is. So look, uh, yeah, look that up, man. Um, if you want to figure out exactly how that goes. Hendrix chord. That's right. It is a, um, what, like an E7 or like an E sharp nine, I guess. Seven sharp nine. Look, Cody coming in clutch right when I said it. I love it. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, guys. It does have both thirds. Um, it is the future of music. Both thirds. All right, gang. Thanks for hanging out. Um, well, let's let's hang out a little bit more. I still gotta I still gotta write the pick strokes in this thing. I'm not gonna kick you out just yet. Let's write out these pick strokes. Anyone, if you have any burning questions, burning desires, you have to ask me something right now. You can't wait until next week. You better ask it now. This is our time to hang out because I just finished another one. And I hung up for an hour and a half today. Whoa, we did a long stream. Well, not long for most people, but I normally just hang out for an hour. Uh, have I ever transcribed to Cheyenne licks? Um, man, I I couldn't tell you for sure, believe it or not. Uh, some of that stuff I have transcribed, and it's just kind of sitting on my computer, and I haven't put it out on the website, or I never made a video about it or anything. So I want to say no, but maybe at one point I did. <laughs> um, I hope your family in Mexico are well the situation here is stressful to say the least yeah my uh, my mother is hanging out with uh, my grandmother in Arizona right now so I've heard some of what what that side of the family is going through, but I certainly don't know the whole situation. I know it is crazy. When all this is over, come to England. I plan to, man. Um, I got to make my my pilgrimage to to Ireland and hit up some Irish jams. Um, yeah, the D thirty five. Yeah, that's still the one I was just playing. Um. Yeah, I play that thing all the time. Gary, you love my album. Thank you so much, man. I'm glad you like it. Um, I shouldn't even say anything, but we might have another album in the works. We'll see. It'll be it'll be fun when that comes out. <laughs> uh, age from Volume 4. Hey, man, you just tell me to do Age because you know I'm a big Jim Croce fan. Like, literally right up there on the wall. Look at that. Let's don't mess around with Jim, right there. And you're like, do age. Yeah, man, you know that I'm going to do that just because you said it. Um, Marcel goes to AdCat. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you should do the uh, subscriber uh, uh, special that I did for Salt Creek. And I did Salt Creek in a crazy tuning. It wasn't AdCat, but it was a wild tuning. Um, what else we got going? Uh, thanks for what you're doing. I'm new to this, but I'm just trying to learn the intro to 10 degrees. <laughs> you know, my friend wrote out a transcription for, for 10 degrees. Uh, my friend who makes fiddles in New York, uh, maybe I can snag that or something. I'm not sure I have that one on the site. I don't think I do. Um, super impressive how fast you can write these. Hopefully I'll catch the live stream again sometime. Um, yeah, Jim Croce is the man. Um, thanks, thanks so much for watching, man. Um, you know, I'd be transcribing these no matter what, so I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Um. <laughs> right, you're hanging out in Scotland. You're like, oh, this is like proto bluegrass. Yeah, totally. Um. All right, here we go. I hear a lot of mixed advice on this topic. Uh, should you anchor the picking hand or not? Do I have to start my technique over from scratch? All right. So here's the thing. Your hand can touch things. Your hand can touch. Right? If you touch the bridge pins or if your hand is open and you touch the wood, you can touch things. What you don't want to do is hold weight because when you're holding weight, you're doing something that has nothing to do with playing the guitar. So if I'm really locking my fingers onto the pick guard, I'm flexing my fingers and probably flexing tendons all the way down my arm that don't have to be flexed. Or if I'm pushing really hard on the bridge pins, I'm pushing into the top of the guitar with my forearm in a way that doesn't help my playing at all. So the confusion on this topic is that touching is fine. Touching is nothing. 
Um, you know, would it be great if everyone was free floating and no one touched and everyone had this perfect David Greer technique? Yeah, but in real life, touching things is fine, but you don't want to hold weight. When you're holding weight, that's what's slowing you down. Um, would you consider doing the intro to I Just Want to Thank You, Lord by Larry Sparks? Yeah, man, I want to do some more Larry Sparks. I have one that is set to come out on the site soon. It's the Blue Virginia Blue. Blue Virginia Blues? Blue Virginia Blue? But anyway, in any case, we're going to put that one out. Um, I want to do more of those. Um, hey, Marcel, how's it going? What's up, man? Do these live streams get posted on YouTube to rewatch? They do get posted on YouTube to rewatch. They're in a playlist called Past Live Streams. So if you go to my channel and you click on playlists, um, you can find uh, just this long list of every live stream that I've ever done. You can watch all of them back. Um, the reason why they're not in my mainstream is just because it clutters things up. Um, and I know not many people are going back to watch these two hour long streams. So that's why I put them all in a playlist sort of where the people who want them can find them. Uh, is the blue chip pick worth it? Uh, what is the closest lower price pick that performs almost as well? Um, blue chips are definitely worth it. Um, I know I hate to say it. I hate to be that guy, but blue chips sound awesome. They sound great. Um, lots of people swear by the, uh, Dunlop prime tones as kind of a, a blue chip copy. Um, they're great. They, they sound like a plastic pick, honestly. Um, they don't sound quite like the blue chip, but I mean, the reason the blue chip is so expensive is because it's made out of like, you know, space grade you know, plastic that they get from NASA. It's supposed to be something ridiculous, like $5,000 a sheet. So yeah, they're a little more pricey, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you should, you should check out the blue chips. If you haven't, the Dunlop prime tones are fine. Um, another one is Miller picks on Etsy. If you check out Miller picks, he does a really good copy too. Um, touching is fine. Marcel. Yeah. Let's put that on a t-shirt, man. Touching is fine. Uh, turn on tinfoil break next time. You know, I thought someone did a breakdown of that online. That's why I haven't done that. I'm not sure if that's true. Q man, thanks for the tip. Yeah, no problem, man. That's the whole thing with the anchoring conversation. I hope that it makes more sense. Um, Gary, I enjoy what you do, Marcel. No matter if it takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes to hours or five days, I have nothing else to do, but enjoy what you do. Play the guitar and enjoy life. I'm, I'm glad you like it, man. We try to push out as much content as we can, so I really appreciate you saying that. Um, what about weekends? Yeah, oh, th that's another great option. I totally, I always forget about these because I don't play them. Um, I had a mandolin player for years that played these weekends, vegans, however you want to say it. Um, they are they are solid picks. You should check those out for sure. Um, it's called Vespin. It's heat resistant plastic, hard to machine, not that crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I heard the crazy expensive thing. I think I heard that on like the bluegrass guitar group or something like that. Someone had some quote from blue chip and I don't remember what it was. I don't know how big the sheets are that they're ordering or anything. Um, I'm just making up numbers obviously, but thanks for calling me out. I deserve that. Um, would love to see some more Norman Blake. His whiskey for breakfast arrangement was fun. Definitely going to do more Norman. Like I said, we're trying to get some Clarence in there. We're trying to get some Larry Sparks. I love hearing that you guys want to hear these other artists because that means that we will do more of these other artists. We just need to hear it from you guys first. Otherwise, we don't know what you want. Um, Tony Rice impression, you have one? I don't have a Tony Rice impression, man. I'm not really an impression kind of guy. Um, would I ever do the tune Lost Indian from Tony's album with Norman? Yeah, man, those, those tunes can happen. When you guys have these suggestions, I mean, put them in comment sections, put them in the chat because we look at those. We really do. I mean, today, the two videos or the two breaks that I did today are both suggestions from the community. I wouldn't have known to do those if people hadn't asked for them. Um, oh, man, we had a little fight breaking out about blue chip. You think the weekends are louder and brighter? All right, man. Let's see what you're saying. Um, yeah, there are some people that swear by both. Um Ultimately, it comes down to just trying both and seeing what you like. Folks, it has been a hell of a live stream. It's been a good time. In fact, let's uh, let's do that. Uh, maybe let's all do that North Carolina prayer together. Everyone bow your heads. Give me a soft hell yeah. Um, pat yourself on the back for hanging out, making this live stream good. 
Um, we do these every Tuesday. We try to do them around noon Eastern time. We tend to hang out for an hour, but hey, this one went way over. We hung out for almost two hours today, so I guess we never know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, it tends to be next week that we put out the stream highlights, so we try to cut these down into exciting little clip reels, and so some of your chat comments might end up in that, all of that good stuff. So um, look out for those. We do have some bigger videos planned. These tend to come out on Mondays and Fridays, apparently. That's how things have worked out. So um, thanks, Marcel. Love you, man. Hell yeah. See, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> look out for those videos. The next one that's coming out, um, I kind of hinted at is a little bit of a group chat between uh, the teachers. Um, at least I hope that cuts up well and it makes sense as a video. We'll see. Um, otherwise, we got other stuff planned. But yeah, thanks so much for, for hanging out. Thanks so much for being part of this. We will see you next week for another live stream. Um, Y'all have... A wonderful day. I'll see you all later. the best.